Thank you, Mr. Attorney General, for appearing before the Judiciary Committee. Uh, I read a report recently that the uh, D.C. United States Attorney's Office had only devoted 5% of resources to January 6th prosecutions. But I have also understand from many conversations that the most or all of the United States Attorney uh, U.S. Attorney Districts contributed an AUSA or an investigator to the effort. Can you confirm whether the department across the board has been providing additional support from other U.S. Attorney's Offices in terms of AUSAs or investigators co uh, contributing for the January 6th investigations? Uh, yes, uh, that's true, and that began before I became Attorney General. That uh, continued after I became Attorney General. So multiple resources across the department have been devoted to that effort, including other districts? Yes, okay. because of the significance of an attack on uh, democracy so in this body. The reason I'm asking about that is in terms of the focus of the resources of the department. Um, if, if my uh, if staff would put up on the screen, um, there's a number of people here that I want to see if you can identify who they are. Um, what we have here in the bottom right-hand corner is a woman named Lizbeth Medina. Uh, she was found dead uh, in a bathtub uh, in Texas. Uh, her mom found her, uh, hoping to see her in a parade uh, that night. Uh, she was killed by Rafael Govea Romero, who was here illegally. Uh, on the bottom left-hand corner, you have Lake and Riley. Um, she was killed uh, by 26-year-old Jose Ibarra, arrested by uh, U.S. Customs and Border Protection uh, after he unlawfully entered the United States near El Paso, Texas. Uh, up above, you have officers uh, Richard Russo, 26, uh, and Officer Christopher Abreu, 26. Both were shot this last weekend by Bernardo Raul Castro Mata, a 19-year-old Venezuelan national apprehended by U.S. Border Patrol after he unlawfully entered the United States near Eagle Pass uh, in July of 2023. What we have is a continued effort by the uh, federal government uh, to fail to secure the border of the United States, and Americans are dying or getting shot, in this case, law enforcement getting shot, two young women who are dead. Uh, my question for you with respect to the department is, uh, do you believe that Texas has a right to defend itself and to ensure that people who are in this country uh, are not here illegally and that we can protect the citizens of Texas from people unlawfully here who are committing crimes to Elizabeth Medina, who's no longer with us because the federal government refused to do its job? Yet the Department of Justice is suing the state of Texas to stop the implementation of SB4. So do you say, as the Attorney General of the United States, Texas does not have a right to defend itself and to protect our citizens from murder by people who have come here illegally into the United States? I say, as the Attorney General and, and as a human being, that my heart goes out to the families, that these are terrible, terrible events. And I say, secondly, as the Attorney General, the way to stop people like this from coming into, into the United States is to give more resources to, to the Border Patrol so that they can prevent Mr. That. Attorney General, no. No. You don't want we to the, We the people of Texas, money's not going to solve the problem when the Department of Homeland Security and the President of the United States refuse to enforce the law, ignore the policies, and Lizbeth Medina would be here alive today if we were following the law. Lake and Riley would be here today if we had not released a killer under the streets of the United States of America through parole policies that this administration is advancing. And the Department of Justice is suing the state of Texas in court, taking valuable resources to go against the people of Texas when Texas simply wants to say that we should have a say in stopping people who are illegally, arrest them, and be able to deal with that on our own terms when the federal government refuses to do its job. As reflected in, in our as reflected in our uh, filings in that case, we are in court because the United States Supreme Court in Arizona versus the United States held that states cannot you're, adopt their own immigration. You're in, you're in court because you're choosing to try to stop Texas from enforcing the laws that the federal choice. government is refusing to enforce. And by the way, that's not the same thing as Arizona. But a, a final question in my last minute: the Department of Justice did not assert privilege with regard to the transcript, correct? That's right. Uh, the, the and you articulated a minute ago to my colleague that the best evidence rule says that the transcribed copy is admissible, right? But, but how can you claim privilege in the face of not just a legislative inquiry, but a constitutional impeachment inquiry? How can you claim privilege for something that you just testified was effectively the same thing? How can you claim privilege for the audio of the transcript you just testified was the same? 
I just testified the words are the same. Sensing and audio is different. You have not given any explanation, and there's nothing in the impeachment resolution that uh, would make a difference with respect well, to Well, I audio. respectfully disagree. I would ask you one last question. Is the decision not to prosecute President Biden for effectively the same crime for which DOJ is prosecuting President Trump, is it because DOJ has determined the president is not mentally fit to defend himself and stand trial for his crime, but former President Trump is? I say again, that's an inaccurate description of Mr. Hur's uh, report. Um, and I would rest on Mr. Hur's report. It's the only assertion he made. I yield back. Gentleman yields back. 